So between yesterday's shellacking and this three-day weekend, today, obviously, you know, it feels like that little summer vibe kind of thing. You know, lots of folks have already taken off, and those who are sticking around probably mentally checked out. Still, though, this is a really important session. You know, here's the thing. The real story of this market continues to be NVIDIA and the magnificence of America's tech sector. Think about this. Globally, the United States has outpaced the world when it comes to profit growth. I mean, really, we're just trouncing them. But if you drill even deeper down, right, those profits have come from information technology. It's led the way big time. In fact, dwarfing everything, including the S&P 500 itself. Now, there's never been a period like this before, folks. I can tell you that where one nation has had the most dominant tech companies in the world. Think about it for a moment. The second industrial revolution began in the UK with the rails. And you know, quickly, though, it spread to the United States. We took the baton. Eventually, our economy passed England. Many takes on this, right? Uh, and a lot of people are take issue with it or are upset. The Magnificent Seven, they're too big. They're too powerful. But they do account for 31% of the S&P 500's market cap. And there's a reason for it, right? Listen, there's no doubt this unique period in human history uh, should be reflected in the stock market, folks. But it does skew investment opportunities elsewhere. And I, and I do believe those opportunities are going to materialize and just take longer with respect to it showing up in share prices. But at some point, they will. Uh, meanwhile, because of the last couple of days and dynamics, at least uh, on a short-term basis, uh, means that uh, you've got a couple of sectors that are looking a little bit lower here. But overall, folks, you know, it's all about the tech names and, and I'm talking professionals who have made a big shift into these names. In fact, take a look at this. I'm going to show you the ownership shift just uh, from fund managers into AI and tech stocks. We've got the model up there, a near-term uh, momentum. We're going to show you where now these uh, tech names are being bought up or have been bought up in the last year by large firms. Uh, look at this, a 19% increase in, in uh, uh, AVGO, Meta 14%, Uber up 14%. These are names that the big boys are buying. Now listen, there are fundamental reasons to own these stocks, but I also suspect the old greater fool theory has had much, very, a lot of weight with respect to the decision-making process. No one wants to be left out. So coming into today's session, the overall bias, uh, again, it remains to the upside on a short-term basis. You look at mid-cap and small caps, so that's turning a little bit lower. Uh, we're in the middle, though, of something historic. Fighting it has been folly, right? And yet, it still seems to me, to many, to be too good to be true. True. And those without exposure, you know, you keep hearing things. I've been quoting this show all the time. They say, well, trees don't grow to the sky or nothing lasts forever. Well, let's bring in Bianco Research uh, President Jim Bianco, because, Jim, you know, those sayings are mostly from, I think, people have missed uh, the Magnificent Seven. Right? <laughs> they, they missed it. Uh, listen, and, and, and obviously trees don't ultimately grow to the sky and nothing does last forever. However, you you have an incredible knowledge of market history and i want to get your thinking overall on this phenomenal period that we're in right now with the mag 7 and the ai phenomenon you know what's different about this period is that the the concentration of the rally is from the largest stocks there are a, a countless number of periods in history where a theme emerges or an industry emerges and it captures everybody's fancy and it goes it's usually very small and it grows into something much bigger. It's almost unheard of to say, let's do that with the largest stocks and make them even larger. That's why, as I heard you say earlier, people have a little bit of a fear about these companies, not about their lack of their profitability, but about the power and the control that they have because they started so big and they've gotten bigger. So its result is a concentration in this rally that we've not seen you know, by some measures ever that the S&P is up over 10% this year. It's only the middle of the year. That's a great year. And half of it has come from four stocks. That's almost unheard of because usually those stocks that are having a huge year are not the biggest ones. They're small stocks, so they don't have much of an impact on the index like these stocks do. And yet, though, I mean, NVIDIA is a reminder that these companies are something special. I mean, what they're doing is just unheard of, the kind of money that they're making, how they are really changing our lives, having this material impact on our lives. I mean, to a degree, it's hard to argue that should not be reflected in the market, right? 
Oh, correct. Absolutely. I mean, NVIDIA's got products and a lot of these other companies have products that are almost you must have. If you are a large company thinking about, you know, getting into the AI space, you must have NVIDIA's product. You know, if you're looking to advertise a product to a broad based segment of the world, you must have something along the lines with Meta. And so you could kind of go on and on with a lot of these companies. And that's what's been so unusual. And that's what's made it so difficult for professional managers, because professional managers usually like to look at things like value and management and strategy. And if they have not been all in on all of these large companies the whole way, they underperform the right. index. And then it feeds into this whole idea. You don't need active management just by the index. The index always wins. And we're in that kind of virtuous cycle right now. Yeah, yeah. Hey, also, though, we know that this week has uh, been a reminder, too, that maybe at this exact moment, even more than the Magnificent Seven, the greatest influence on this market is the assumption. I say not that the Fed is going to cut, but the assumption that the Fed is going to cut. Uh, you know, even if it's just one cut, Wall Street's been OK. The rally's been sustainable. But, you know, what if it becomes too obvious that they can't cut this year? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, the, the, it is really going in that direction because Wall Street forever keeps pushing off that first rate cut. Now, all of a sudden, we're starting to talk about September and we're maybe talking about November. And I've joked that, you know, we'll get to the 4th of July and we'll be talking about November and December and the cycle just continues. But for right now, the state of the economy, it's too strong and the data is, you know, I want to say too sticky on inflation to really be talking about rate cuts unless we start seeing some real weakness in the data. And to go back to our earlier conversation about these companies in the stock market moving ahead, we're not really seeing real weakness in this data right now. No, we're not. Uh, uh, Jim, thank you so much, my friend. Have a fantastic weekend. Thank you, you too. So when it comes to